welcome to Aerotech's Automation One Motion Control Platform Educational Series. Aerotech is a company that solves your toughest precision motion and automation challenges. Automation One is a motion control platform consisting of software-based controls and development tools, PC and drive-based control hardware, and hardware-based drives for servo motors and other devices. In this video, you'll discover in more detail what Part Speed PSO is, how it is used, and how we can configure it. We will also show you how we can modify an existing PSO program to track a virtual encoder using this feature. My name is Alex Smoker and I am Control System Specialist for Aerotech. Now let's look at what Parts Speed PSO is. If you have not already watched our previous video on traditional PSO, we will review what the Parts Speed PSO is. As opposed to tracking a position feedback signal like an encoder, Parts Speed PSO actually tracks the velocity command of an axis. And because part speed PSO is based on tracking a command rather than needing a feedback device, part speed PSO can then be used for more complex operations such as using PSO when the encoder feedback is either nonlinear or even non-accessible. This includes, amongst other things, the ability to track virtual axes. So take, for instance, if the X, Y, and Z part space commands of a system are being modified by some sort of kinematic transformation, such as a 3-axis Galvo or Hexapod system. Part speed PSO would be able to track this XYZ axis command operating within this part space of the tool rather than trying to track the encoder sources themselves. Alternatively, because part speed PSO is based on this velocity command, this also lets you utilize some PSO features when either the encoder hardware for PSO is unavailable or you're using a traditionally non compatible PSO feedback device, such as an absolute encoder without incremental signal capabilities. This is a good visual representation of that example. Here we have a five axis machine configuration as shown. In this configuration, the user programs in the XYZ part space shown here in red. This is usually done via virtual axes. However, the actual motion is being commanded the X, Y, Z, A, and C real axes shown in green. Using transformations and translations, the user can program the PSO to track the motion related to the virtual XYZ part space axes. So what differences are there between traditional PSO and part speed PSO? Well, first of all, we've already established that this feature uses the velocity command of either a real or virtual axis rather than position feedback. Secondly, the pulse generator or waveform generator is limited to only being able to output pulses at a 95 megahertz rate. This therefore limits the vector feed rate that we can command our axes at. Beyond that, however, PSO shares the same basic form, fit, and function as normal PSO does. For instance, part speed PSO also has dual and triple axis capabilities. And as far as programming commands go, it still utilizes the same programming commands to configure the event and waveform modules. It is simply an extension of the already existing PSO commands. So touching on those technical considerations, let's briefly look at the feed rate limitation. This is simply due to how fast we are able to actually send pulses out of the waveform module itself. So using that knowledge, we can determine our maximum vector speed by dividing our limitation of 95 megahertz, or 95 million encoder counts per second, divided by your counts per unit parameter. This should give you your estimated maximum vector speed that you can actually track. Using this, we can also determine our minimum pulse spacing value for the pulses themselves. This value can be determined by taking your vector speed and dividing it by the maximum output frequency of your drive hardware. Now, diving a little bit more into detail about how part speed PSO works, we have a brief diagram here showing you the flowchart of how we imagine part speed PSO working. When part speed PSO is enabled, a real or virtual axis, or axes, generates the velocity command that is then tracked as virtual encoder counts. These virtual encoder counts are then passed to the physical drive axis that contains the PSO output and hardware. This physical hardware axis then tracks the virtual PSO counts and generates the PSO pulses based upon those. We will see these more in depth when we go over our programming example, but briefly let me go over some additional programming commands that we will add to implement the part speed PSO. First, the drive pulse stream configure function is used to establish which axes will be used to generate the tracked velocity command. Essentially, this command will specify which axes are generating the velocity command that we then plan on tracking virtually. Second, the PSO distance configure inputs function is also used to determine which physical real drive will receive that velocity command that we can then track. In our example, this is going to be the real x-axis as opposed to the virtual lowercase x-axis. 
So these commands will be used to essentially, one, specify which axes, real or virtual, that would generate the velocity command we plan on using. And then two, send that signal to a real physical drive so that we can actually track and fire based upon that. We will also come across what we refer to as the pulse stream. Simply put, this is a general term used to refer to the Automation 1 feature that allows Aerotech to stream data out of the drive. Historically, this pulse stream was used for outputting clock and direction commands for certain stepper motor control. Now we utilize this feature for streaming the virtual encoder signals for part speed PSO operations. This is effectively what allows us to track the vector velocity of an axis. If you have not done so, I would recommend reviewing the traditional PSO video since this example will build upon our previous single axis PSO example. So here is going to be our example for today. We're simply going to be modifying and updating our simple single axis 1D PSO example that we had running a little while ago. For this, we're just going to show you how we can update and modify a program to implement part speed PSO. Like we mentioned before, it is based on pre-existing commands, so there shouldn't be a whole lot new that we have to add to this. We simply have to modify our PSO and tell it which new axes and which new signals we plan on tracking. So the first thing we're going to do is change which signal we're actually tracking. Since we're no longer tracking the primary feedback input, well, what are we tracking now? And for that, what we're going to be tracking is the pulse stream. So this is the drive pulse stream that we talked about before. What we also want to do is configure where we're sending that virtual signal to. We send that to, say, a real hardware drive that can utilize, say, the 1, 2, or 3D PSO aspect and actually fire an output. So that's going to be our x-axis. Now, as far as which axis we're tracking, as far as where that velocity command is coming from, we're going to be using the virtual lowercase x axis. And we're going to be giving it a scaling factor of 1. Now, that scaling factor is simply something that we can use to modify the incoming tracking signal that we're looking at. So this is, for instance, something like converting from millimeters to centimeters or millimeters to inches if you wanted to do that. In our case, we don't need to modify this incoming stream. We just want it to be as one-to-one -one as possible. So our scaling factor is just going to be one. Now, what we'll also need to do up here is change our fixed distance. Because we're tracking the lowercase x-axis now, we want to update our units to counts function to reflect that now we want to track 10 millimeters in lowercase x units, not uppercase. After this, every other programming command still stays the same. We keep our total time, we keep our fixed time and our counts. What we will have to do, though, is enable the pulse stream. So that can be done with the drive pulse stream on command. And then as good measure to prevent anything from happening, if we chose to rerun this program back to back, we will disable it. All right, so disabled for good measure. And that should be all the changes that we actually need to make. Again, as a review, we're updating what the signal we're actually tracking is. We are configuring that signal and sending that signal to a specific drive. We are enabling the pulse stream, and then we are executing our move. Now, what I will want to also do here is update my move itself. I don't want to be moving the x-axis. I want to be moving the lowercase x-axis so we can show how our primary axis isn't actually moving while we're still seeing PSO pulses. All right, now let's go ahead and configure our signals. Now, we'll still see all the exact same signals. We'll be looking at the x-axis position feedback, the counter, as well as the output status. The other thing I want to add is the lowercase x-axis position feedback, so we can show that as we are firing our pulses that we will still see one of the two axes actually moving or being told to move, even though the one is virtual. All right, let me go ahead and enable and home my lowercase x-axis. 
and we will run this program. So here is the resulting output. As we can see in our cursor display, the position feedback for my x-axis does not change at all. It sits at zero, yet we are still seeing PSO pulses. But if we scroll down, we could of course see that our lowercase x-axis is actually moving, and that is what we are tracking in a way. But if we zoomed in, what we can actually see are our total time 20 millisecond periods, three of them, as well as the 15 millisecond on time. So everything else still stayed the same. What we are essentially just changed here is now we are tracking a virtual axis. Now we could do this with a real axis, such as you know something like we're doing in a, a five axis hexapod or other configuration and utilize some kinematics to actually do the movements. However, I think this gives you a good idea of how we can update and how we can modify existing programs to track you know, some kind of virtual axis or velocity command through the drive pulse stream to be able to utilize part speed PSO in this manner. That concludes this motion control platform educational video. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed learning about the functionality and use of part speed PSO.